Hello dear everyone, welcome to Fit with Kalida Sofa Stretch. Today we're going to um, do or at least part of my favorite evening routine and for this I use, I misuse our sofa. So I hope you have something similar where you are right now. Let me know what you use today to follow this um, session. It's, um, it's very gentle. This is the way that I uh, stretch out before going to bed or sometimes if I've been sitting a lot, which happens a lot because we're all online at the moment, then I use the movements we will do today just to reset my body and um, get moving again. If you are a dancer watching this, hi Karen, if you're a dancer, then try out your shimmies before and after doing this stretch session. If you're not a dancer, just follow along. <laughs> so shimmy, any shimmy you like, let's try Egyptian shimmy. Just see how it feels, see how your legs feel, how big or even the shimmy is, how relaxed it is. Then try a hip shimmy, hello. <laughs> try a hip shimmy where the knees are a little bit bent, not too much, but just enough to translate the movement into your hips. This is also a warm up our stretching and then try a choo choo shimmy going up on relevé all the way heels up if you saw my uh, my post from a few days ago bring up the heels all the way because it's easier on the body than having it here is heavier yes so heels up all the way then bend slightly not too much because then you get tired here but just enough to translate movement into your hips so it's a little choo choo mini <laughs> tutorial yes so that's that's how it feels before and maybe after this session it'll feel more effortless, more released and that's, um, that's the kind of thing that I like, yes? Using stretching, using strengthening to make movement more effortless and more fun and that's how also how, that's my philosophy for dance as well and that's what I'm doing in my Boost series for which there's one spot left. So if you're into shimmies and if you're into body geekery, strength and relaxation and stretching, using them for dance, sign up for my Boost series. There's only one spot left for the next 12 weeks. Okay. <laughs> Just want to say that so you guys hear it from me directly. You will need a sofa and a little table. Let's see, about knee height. If you don't have a table, you can use maybe a little step stool or something. It's be for sitting in the sofa and holding yourself up. If you want, grab yourself a few yoga blocks. And also that's optional, it's to make the stretches a bit easier and to give you support. Hi Jane, welcome. Let me see. Yes, I've got myself some blocks. These are totally optional. They are to, to stand on and to hold for yourself. So let's get going. I want to get my I want to get my pink blocks just so it matches the outfit better. First thing that we will do is um, a very nice lower back stretch, upper body stretch, because if you stretch the latissimus and the big muscles of the back, then everything else loosens up more also. Also, <laughs> I forgot to do this in all the previous sessions, so I'm doing it now. Check your own posture. If you have a mirror, just stand more or less relaxed and see, see how this area is doing. Are you a bit to the back? Are you a bit to the front? Are you a bit bent? How easy is it to straighten your legs? How easy is it to relax your shoulders? And how easy is it to look left and right and to breathe? All this might change after the session, I hope. Okay, first thing to do. This can also be a table or a doorknob or a friend. That's a stretch we often do and I learned from uh, my online stretching teacher, Stacey Namor. You grab something, your feet are closed, make sure this is a heavy sofa, yes. And then you pull back with a long back. So my hips hinge, I slide them back. My tailbone is diagonal, not up, not down. And my back is long. So I sit back and this is a stretch for the top part of the back of my leg also for the hips and then if I sink deeper it becomes a stretch for the back for the area that connects the back to the arms and then you can sway left to right if you sink down deeper you will feel it in different spots 
And if you grab over to one side, you can go deeper into the side. So that's credits to Stacey Namor, my <laughs> stretching sensei. She has a, a DVD I mentioned last week called Secrets of Splits and Flexibility. And that's the one that got me into splits at 37 for the first time in my life. So that's really good tips. So from there, you can go back into your squat. <laughs> Sorry, I moved the sofa. And then you come back up and you move again. So this already should help you feel a bit more free. Let's walk around. I like to walk because then everything integrates, yes? And you might already even feel your feet better. Okay. Second of my favorite ways to use a sofa or something similar is the, the armrest, which will now be our footrest. So I'll put my foot up here and I try to find something that is about uh, hip height or a bit higher. I mean, yes, so for the foot. Is, if this is a bit too high for you, you can elevate yourself on the blocks and you make the angle a bit less. But if you're okay with having the knee up a bit higher, you can just be like that. So this way you adapt. And if you want to have your foot higher, your sofa armrest is really low, you do the opposite. You put the block here. Yes, I'll be in the middle. I'll do one block. And the foot. My hips are straight. I will be uh, squaring them off. And I try to have my foot under my knee. So not too far in, not too far out. Goldilocks style. I will angle my body towards my leg, lengthening first, inhaling up, and then if I exhale, I just hang out here, my arms here. If you want to make this deeper, you can grab a hand weight or a water bottle and you will feel it in this area. And that's a, a really safe and nice way to stretch the inner thighs and the rotators as well as the top of the leg. So from here, you lengthen more. And you exhale. And you lengthen more. As you inhale, you hold. And when you exhale, you sink deeper. And there you can move a bit. You can also grab the sofa and deepen the stretch by pulling and giving yourself a bit of resistance and pressing your foot into the armrest. Yeah, so that's a nice way to abuse your sofa and you'll feel a lot better afterwards. It's also really good if you have sciatica or pain in there along this line. How does that one feel? Hi, hi Lisa. Okay, I'll repeat on the other side, just so I am even. But walk around and feel it. This one really hits that area. I have my diagonal pen so you can see the lines better. Of course, it's easier if you can hold the sofa backrest, but that's how it is. So I'll be standing on a block to elevate myself, to make the angle less. But if you like to have a deeper stretch, you ditch the block or put the block under the foot. This way you can play with the angles. Square the hips, lengthen first, and then you send your body up and out over. You might already feel it on the inside of this leg. So first you hang out here. You can even massage your top leg with your arm, <laughs> Thai massage style. And then you inhale again, you deepen, inhale again, hold the inhalation, press with this foot down into the sofa, and then you relax. And if you have nothing, nothing to grab here, you can grab your leg, pull it towards you, and press your foot into the sofa at the same time. Inhale, pull and press, exhale, deeper. And then once you're deep enough, you can grab this area here. Lengthen the back when you inhale, and you can relax and round here. At the deepest point for today, you can circle and move and find any angles that leg popped. You can find any angles that feel nice and you just hang out there as long as you like, and you come back up and you shake it out. So that's quite a deep stretch, but very comfortable also. Walk around, walk around. I hope you like this one. It's one of my favorites. It's also by Stacey Namor. So 
Yes, he has a discount code, 10% off, if you use D4C, Dance for Children, and she donates part of the proceeds of her DVDs to a good cause. So, thank you, Stacy. How does this one feel? Yes, this one is my favorite from her DVDs, and you will find it there also. Third way to use the sofa is to open up the front um, and the top of the front legs and the hips and also the shoulders if you want. And that one, that one I invented myself. <laughs> so, have your blocks with you. For this you will need, let me see if I can angle it smartly. You will need to be in your sofa. Your back leg will be on the backrest and your front leg can be on the floor or on the table or on the sofa. So there's three options. If you know my tip drops, I put this one in a separate video, but I wanted to include it because it is a sofa stretch. The blocks are for your hands to push yourself up or to put behind your foot to make the stretch deeper. So you can use them to make it easier or more deep. Let me get positioned. Can you see me? Yes. Let me. I'll take you with me. So what you can do, uh, to just stretch your quads, you can simply sit in the sofa, like that, <laughs> and watch TV, read a book or whatever. It's more comfortable because it is cushioned, and you can lean back from there, and be nice and supported, and then pull your hips up. So that's way more comfortable than doing this stretch on the floor, yes? And you can open the shoulders, open the arms, like this or like this. To have a full front of the body stretch and you can even have your head back and open the heart so if you want to have more heart opening you scoot up a bit and you can practice a little cambre back bend safely here so i have this sofa backrest right under my armpits and you breathe so that's like <coughs> excuse me you use the sofa as your bolster. So that's the first one, have some water. By the way, hydrating well also helps with flexibility. So <laughs> join me and cheers. It makes a difference in um, how much your body opens up if you're not slightly dehydrated. Because dehydration is a kind of stress for your nervous system, <laughs> taking care of yourself will also allow you to have more flexibility at the same time. Okay, I have to... I saw that I was almost out of frame. This would be better. So, quad stretch, upper body stretch, and just simple relaxation. You can do that for a couple of minutes. Then, if you want to stretch more actively, try this. And this is a stretch that is hard for me to do on the floor because it's hard on the knees if your um, quads are a bit tight. It pulls the kneecap. But you can scoot one foot back and nestle the knee into the sofa backrest. And if this pushes you forward, if you're a bit tight here, you use your table and some blocks. And then you can lengthen this hip like that and scoot this knee forward. And from there, the nice part is you can move the hips left and right. And just feel it out. Wherever you feel, a nice stretch, that's where you hang out and you breathe, like we did with the upper leg. And breathe back in, you can even open the hips, sing back to the side, and move your head. Look around, and you will feel that the stretch goes, runs into the obliques as well, if you use your leg. Lengthening, looking around, and when you find a good spot, breathe there for a second. Let's switch legs. And all these stretches, you can repeat them, but I don't want to make the video too long. Your favorite ones, you do them as often as you like. There's no health on benefits. Unless you feel sore after stretching, then you may have gone a bit too deep. You give yourself a bit of rest, and then you do it carefully again. Okay, so my knee is all the way in. My foot is against the sofa. I try to have it straight, not in, not out, yet. That's a variation that you can do later. Use your table and your blocks. You can also put them up like that, depending on how high up you want to be. The lower, 
the less deep the stretch, so you choose. Important though that you keep your posture upright because it's a different movement reflex if you're all rounded and hunched as opposed to when you're straight. You want eventually to use your flexibility for good posture. So having the posture, even though the stretch might become deeper, is better than forcing it but being all hunchy. So lengthen and open and adapt. If that means you have to come lower on the box, you come lower on the box. Okay, so I'm pressing my foot into the sofa. My hip comes down. I lengthen and then I move side to side. Hope you can see what I mean if you just tuned in. It was difficult to find an angle for, the, uh, for filming this. But you can see both. Okay. Now I move the head in the opposite direction. So if my right foot, say this is my right foot, is against the backrest, I would look up and left and then it stretches the whole diagonal line including the obliques. So if you did my ab exercise from YouTube, this one is nice to do after. Okay. The deeper you press your foot into the backrest, the more intense the stretch. And you come out and you sit yourself on your legs. You can also elevate your booty with blocks if that is tight. And if you want to stretch the back, you use your blocks to elevate the hands and you lengthen here. You can put them upright like that. And you can high, have them even higher, then you will stretch your upper body. So you make it as comfortable as possible for yourself to do stretching and that will motivate you to do more of it. Because flexibility work can be uncomfortable, it can also be a bit disheartening or unmotivating. So make it as nice for yourself as possible, for instance by using your sofa. Okay. So that's two ways to use it, three ways. One, pulling yourself, squatty back stretch. Two, leg on the armrest, becomes your footrest. Three, using the seat uh, to open up the front of your body and the heart. Now, four, final part, final part is, um, for this you use the blocks also again to make it easier. We're going to go behind the sofa. Hi Vanessa, hello. So this one uh, is something that I like to do to have higher kicks, higher legs for ballet, but also just to open up the hip area and to stretch the back of my legs and my feet. So what I do is I, so this depends on how flexible you are to start. If you can lift your knee as high as the sofa back, you can simply plop your foot on top of it. If this is too much, for me it was in the beginning, what you do is you use your blocks for your standing foot. I'll come a bit closer. Meaning, I'll pull you a bit closer. Voila, so you can see me like this. So you use the block, one or two, but be careful, hold yourself for balance, to elevate yourself and then the stretch is a bit less intense. So you can start like this. I will square my hips again. It gives me a different angle than when I'm open, so I square the hips back. If you're working on the splits, by the way, using the sofa, for the back leg and the back of the sofa for the front leg is a good splits preparation also. So this will help you if you do this in the evening. So first part of the sequence, I have my leg simply relax and I lengthen. And this already you might feel. Let me know if you feel this. If you don't feel it, remove one block. If you don't feel that, remove another block. And if you are really flexible or starting to become more so, you can start elevating your foot with the block instead and this way you make this higher. Yes. Okay. For demo purposes, I will be on one block, but usually I don't use the block anymore. From here, pull, I hope you can see my feet. I have white socks and a white sofa, but I'm pulling my toes actively towards me and I'm pushing the heel out. So I'm doing this with my foot. Squaring the hips, and then I point the ankle and then the toes. And I breathe. Then again, I pull up. Let's do this three times. I lengthen while I pull up and I angle my body a bit forward 
just enough so I feel it a little bit. Pull the toes towards you actively. Lengthen this leg. Think of sending energy from the back of the leg out towards the heel so it straightens out everything. It's also really good for shimmies to every now and then safely straighten your legs because we tend to belly dance a bit bent all the time and it's not so good for the joints. You have to have all the range of motion. From there, point the ankle, point the toes, see if you can go deeper. Then from there, you just move the foot, move the foot, move the foot, and if it opens up, you come lower. If it doesn't open up, you stay, and you let your body get used to this situation. But I have my back lengthened and this open as much as possible. It makes a difference in how effective the stretch is. This is no use. You have to have this open. Better to be up here and feel it in the right places. So move the foot, you can circle it. If you feel particularly tight in the calf muscles or shins, you can use your knuckles and just massage a bit. Also behind the knee or here, wherever you feel it, you tap, you massage. And that's why I like this stretch. Everything is within reach more than when you're on the floor. Okay. If you are flexible enough, you can grab your foot over and give yourself a bit of foot massage. You can grab the outside and pull it. It sometimes releases the side. You can grab the inside and massage. Or if you want to stretch your lower back, you reach up and over to the opposite side of the foot. And if you can reach that, congratulations, because that is tricky for me, but it also stretches the whole back line. Okay, that's one side. Shake that out. Let's walk. You might feel a bit lopsided after this, <laughs> because it's quite deep. I will do the other side a bit quicker. And then we go into two more leg moves on the backrest, and that's it for today. I might do another video if you like this one. So I'll have to be away from you to show it. I have my outside leg on the sofa. You can also put your inside leg on the sofa. Maybe I'll do that so I can face you. But usually I do this one here and then the other one here. Whichever feels most effective for you, you can do. So plop your leg up as elevated on the standing leg as needed. If you don't need the box, you do it on the floor, like that. If you need more elevation, put blocks under the foot. Square those hips, and mind the back foot. If you turn it out or in, it's a different stretch. So you do whichever one feels best for you. Square the shoulders, lifting up. Breathe, toes in. Lengthen, toes out. Again. I mean, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in and hold. Point. And I still see if it releases. Again, inhale, flex, hold, exhale, point, release. And you can take as much time as you want for this. Sometimes it takes a couple of minutes and then suddenly a release happens. So if it is your sofa stretching time, you can take as much time as you like. This is just to demonstrate. Uh, sometimes I switch longer, sometimes shorter. It depends. Actively pulling the toes towards you, actively sending energy out through, through the leg and straightening it out as much as you can. It's safe because you don't have your standing weight on it. If this means you have to come up a bit, come up a bit. If you can, you can grab over the foot outside and pull it a bit, sometimes releases, pull the inside a bit, massage a bit, then for a back stretch, lift up the opposite hand, rotate your body towards your foot, grab over, this side is easier for me, and you lengthen, <laughs> then you'll feel it, and again here you can move the foot. So this is quite deep but safe because you can regulate uh, the stretch. If you want you can also come forward, or move back uh, to involve the back leg also. So that's for the back of the leg. Shake it out, walk around again, and let me check the time. <laughs> yes, try your shimmy already again, right now. Egyptian shimmy, as you can see, I'm moving a bit more, even though the effort is the same. 
sink into the knees a tiny tiny bit try hip shimmy this might also you might now feel also where the shimmy uh, moves <laughs> left and right it'll give you a bit more control if you feel your body and stretching it um, sometimes opens up also more strength just because things that were not moving are now moving and that gives you more power as well uh, and as long as everything stays in motion okay and what else oh yes the choo-choo shimmy going up on releve because we practice pointing flexing and pointing the ankle and flexing and pointing the toes you might have a bit of an easier time to come up in releve higher and then from there you open up the upper body as we practice also on the sofa and then you move the hips up and down up and down and you smile <laughs> okay that's phase two final part of the stretch and these are the deepest ones so we do them last also involve the back of the sofa and optionally blocks if you want to elevate your standing foot to make it a bit easier blocks under the playing foot to make it higher okay demo so we're going to go with the outside leg again inside leg is on the block we angle it let's say straight to start but we will start moving our standing leg away so we open up different areas so we have started here that's position one then I'm going to turn my block my body towards the angle of the sofa itself so now my leg is on my side before it was in front of me and that's a whole different beast of a stretch yes if you want to test it you can go deeper do a plie with the standing leg and you can do that here also this we do in ballet and if you can do a plie you've actually gained a bit of flexibility you might be able to we test you might be able to go without the block because the plie mimics the block removal so that's how we test it from here my standing leg is turned out it's towards that corner my play leg is out here and to to practice my turnout for traveling steps but also for ballet i try to be centered so i don't have my body up here i try to really have it in the middle of the two feet triangle so my body's here not there not there <coughs> in the middle and i bend and straighten bend and straighten flex and point flex and point and now what you can do is you can stretch your side let me use my table <laughs> you can stretch your side by lifting and going towards this leg that is on your sofa so i would lift inhale and then bend and i try to open my shoulder so it's towards the ceiling and not rounded here it's a different stretch we already did this pulling the sofa so now we will open up more and trust me even though it feels <laughs> like more effort it is more effective to do both so i lift up and i move exactly sideways so i don't roll in i roll up you can even look up at the ceiling there and to make this easier move your arm out and back a couple of times it sometimes opens up more movement you inhale here you exhale you inhale your way up and you can use your hand here to push yourself up if it feels sensitive. Now do the same with your foot pointed all the way and your leg straight all the way. Straightening your leg more counterintuitively will give you more flexibility in other places. So if I, if I just keep this um, unattended, it'll block me in different parts. So I send energy out this leg so my posture opens up and then I can really stretch where I want to stretch. Stay sideways and you do this a couple of times if you feel very tight in this area what you can do is while you're in the stretch use the other hand and massage a bit and if it is very sore you might have some trigger points here you release them simply by holding the stretch not too deep but you go back out a bit and then poking poking yourself and moving a bit so that's how you release it and you will have more flexibility almost immediately doing that and for that you don't have to be on the sofa but it's a good test other leg other leg so 
how will I do this with the camera? Yes, I'll simply go from my other leg. So you might not be able to see it as much. So I've started here. I turn my foot so it's turned out, and this one is turned out. Can you get a bit closer? It depends on your natural turnout, how close you will be to the sofa. If you have less turnout like me, you will be a bit away. If you have 180 turnout, you can almost be in the sofa with this leg. So that you just adapt to yourself, see how you can stand. And you can practice your turnout here by rolling, by rolling your leg with your hand right at the hip, there. Straightening out this leg. Pointing and flexing. Be on a block if this is too high for you. And if you want to have more leg height, put blocks under the foot. Now square your body. Lift up this side of the rib cage, And then you can hold the sofa and pull it to make it easier to come around. Just a little first. Then on the repeat it becomes easier. If you want to open up more here, send your arm back. Follow it with your eyes. A few times. And now we go a bit deeper. Point the foot. Exhale over. And flex the foot. Let's go back. I'm actively pulling here, pulling the sofa to open up the angle here. <laughs> and out you come. That's position two. Position three is what I use for Taekwondo, for kicking. There we have a side kick where you're, you're almost in the splits, meaning the back leg is turned, not out like in ballet, but it's turned over. So if you would be, if these were my legs for the splits, the, the front splits, your, let me see, this is your top knee, your front knee, and this is your back knee, yes? So before we were stretching, we were stretching this, the front, then we did this, the side, and the third position, the leg turns over. <laughs> Hi Karen, <laughs> these are my legs, yes? I'm showing you what, what we are stretching. So to repeat, first position was here, second was here for the side splits, and then for the front splits, I will turn further, so my hip turns around. And this, in itself, is a really nice position to open up range of motion in your hips. And again, don't feel stressed if the sofa is a bit too high. It depends on what sofa you have. You can elevate yourself on one or two blocks and be in this position. So, to show you, it's like this. My hip is turned under, so I'm feeling the stretch more in the front as we did on the, in the second exercise we did today. And what makes this one feel really nice is to press the heel out. Yes, we're always used to having our feet pointed. So pressing the heel out and turning the leg under while you're on the sofa and then lifting your body up. That gets, that gets some areas uh, opened up that normally are hard to reach. So what I have, I'm just using my chair to demonstrate. I have my heel out like that. Leg is turned under, and then I use the sofa to press my body up. So press my body up. And then you feel a nice deep opening here. And you can move in and out of this stretch. You don't have to hold it and suffer. You move in and out to open up more range of motion. Straightening out the leg, heel it out. Other side. I hope this makes sense. I know it's sometimes hard to see with the angles. That's why I, <laughs> I move my leg out. So I have my leg behind me, I would say it. This one parallel with the sofa, this one to the back, and my heel is out. So my heel is out. I place my leg on it first, and then I push myself up using the sofa or some blocks to come up higher. That. So you can use your sofa for gentle stretching to advanced split stretching, depending on your mood and what you want to work on. So now you can have a block and use it to push yourself up 
the higher you can pull up your body, and this sometimes takes time, but the higher you can have your leg in the end because it's all connected. And the more you can sit up straight if you want to practice splits. So rotate the back hip, opening up more movement. I'll put a block on the side so you can see me better. Let me move so you can see what's happening. I have my heel out, leg turned in, and then I press up. The block, you can see it better. Like that. Side kick pose. And then you can, if you have a table or something else here, you can bend your body away and try to lift the leg even and kick. <laughs> Optional. <laughs> Optional for the martial arts aficionados among you. So we had leg in front, leg on the side, leg behind. Now a final one to open up the hips even more and then I will release you is um, similar but with a bent leg. So I'll be on a block if the sofa feels too high for me or again medium. I'm on the floor and I have my hip. I have my knee on my side on the sofa. So my foot is turned out in that direction, standing foot, and this knee is up and open and this can just bang out. From there, again, you can roll the hip. I have to work hard on my turnout because I don't have a natural turnout position in my hips and it helps me a lot with dancing if this area is uh, released. So I use this sofa cushion and you can even put blocks under it or uh, towels if your sofa is a bit harder. This one is really fluffy. To gently stretch this and to be able to move without suffering too much. Shake it out, other side. And that one also helps with shimmies. So my boosties, I know some of you are here. My boost students, we will be doing uh, some of these stretches, but maybe without the sofa. So you can do them wherever, whenever in our upcoming 12 week series. Anything I can think of that will help your shimmies, we will do in boost season two. Yes, so roll front and back, front and back, front and back, including a bit of strengthening exercises for the hips that always helps also to open up range. And if you want, you can even move your body towards the hip in order to enable this range of motion also. Okay, walk around. Try that again. And you might feel it even here in this area now. Let me know, where do you feel this? <laughs> right now. For me, it's like a square. I feel it from here all the way up to here and a bit in the back also. So from rib cage to knees, for me now feels as if I'm speaking to it more. Let's try shimmy again, Egyptian. Straight legged, as you can see, <laughs> belly button travels side to side. Or soften a little bit, not too much. And you see the, the hip fabric going up and down. Or choo choo. <sighs> and you breathe. Yes. Okay. Let me see. Another, another one. One for the upper body, and then we are finished. Another way to use the sofa, the cushionedness. There's more exercises that I'm thinking of while I'm here, so I might do a second sofa stretch at some point, but this one I want to give you before we go. You will have your hands on top of each other, like a genie. And this we did last week for the upper body, but you can use the sofa for that if a table is too hard. So same principle, same procedure. Let me give you a bit more space. Hands on top of each other. And also this is a stretch by Stacy Nemore, my, my splits teacher. <laughs> and I move my hips back. You can see I'm just walking back, keeping the arms elbows as they are, until my head kind of fits in. And then you can bend and straighten, bending, straightening my legs. And every time I straighten, I sink a bit deeper. Switch genie hands, walking back. And if this feels uh, already like a very deep stretch, 
you stay here. Yes, this, this is quite intense. If you want to modify, elevate your hands with the block, and then you can go deeper. Also here, move side to side carefully, because this might be very sensitive. To open up the shoulders even more. Bend and straighten the legs. You can walk, you can even practice your shimmy here and your flutters or all of it. Also, by the way, if you want to work on your flutters, we also do that in boost season two in the second part. Coming up, move those arms, integrate your flexibility and walk around again. Also to remember, first thing we did, pulling. Second thing we did, foot up and bending front. That's a very deep stretch here. Third thing we did is sitting in the sofa uh, with the back, with the knee in this little corner and the foot up and then using the table. And there's more stretches for that that I will show later. And then we went to the back of the sofa, put our leg on top and turned our body around in all directions for splits pre-practice. If you practice your splits, after this routine, it'll be a little bit easier. Yes. On Monday, we start with my boost program, 12 weeks of strength, flexibility and dance, focusing on shimmies for three months. So if you are into shimmies and if you're into strength and flexibility and how this magic works on your dancing, nap that final spot for boost. Yes, I hope, because I, I love having people in there who are interested in uh, how the body works. And if you are in Fit with Kalida, I think, <laughs> I think you fit this profile. And we have a wonderful group of very supportive, very nice people in Boost. We are more than 50 participants. And yes, and one spot opened up for season two, three months, 12 weeks, three short sessions per week. And you can watch the recordings for as long as you want. This is the only year that I'm doing that, that you can keep the recordings forever. So it's a good chance to work on your shimmies and they might be different for the rest of your life. It's my passion project. Yes, it's, it's that which has helped me the most in my dance life is to discover how much of a difference it makes. If you, if you stop just drilling, drilling the movements and getting frustrated, which is what I was doing for more than 10 years, and you take a step back. I had to because I had an old injury that was hurting me. So I had to stop dancing and work on my flexibility and strength as a kind of, um, how to say it, a recovery program. But then when I came back to dancing and I was a bit nervous because I hadn't practiced and I hadn't had any uh, desire to dance. When I tried it, my dancing had transformed and my posture was better. So I thought, okay, there, I might be onto something. I might have been, uh, bouncing my head against the wall, trying to improve my movements, but the fundamentals underneath it were blocking me. So as soon as I, I noticed this, I also realized you don't have to do very hard workouts to get stronger and you don't have to do painful stretches to get more flexible. You can, you can absolutely and you should adapt it to you and your life. And if you take into account that the magic happens when you rest, it's the same with stretching. If you stretch deeply and you rest, that's when your body processes the input that you just gave it. It's not the stretching that makes you more flexible. It's the reaction of your body to the stretch that happens at night. <laughs> same thing with strength. It's not the, the lifting weights that make you stronger, even though it might activate you a bit more uh, neurologically. So there is a, a portion of it that makes you stronger or more flexible immediately. But when you sleep on it, that's when the true transformation literally happens. That's when your body starts adapting. Yes, so, so we do that. In Boost, we have strength on Monday, flexibility on Tuesday, and then a couple of nights, days to process everything, and then we dance, and then that's when the magic happens. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here, by the way, all of you, fit with Kalida followers. We were more than 75 people in the group already, and we have over 400, uh, followers on Instagram, which is amazing because last week I was celebrating that we had 300 people. And uh, this tells me, this tells me that there is a need, I think, for people to move, to move in gentle ways and to take care of themselves from the home, from wherever you are, especially in these times. It's so important. 
So I hope what we do is helpful to you. And if it is, feel free to share. These videos, even though they're in the group, are public. So share to anyone uh, that you think might benefit from it. And hopefully will spread the joy of movement and keep you guys healthy and moving for as long as possible because that's my ultimate goal with Fit with Kalida. Keep you moving, keep you healthy for as long as possible. Yes, <laughs> let's stay moving. Good, have a great weekend and see you soon. Bye-bye.